Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Swing 101. Uh, leading up until now, we've learned about the basics. We learned first how to create a frame, then about a bunch of different basic essential components you can add to the frame, and then a couple of other uh, important ideas like layout managers. We finally uh, accumulated that in, I believe it was episode 7, if I'm not mistaken, where we made the uh, login GUI as an example of combining layout managers with all of the components that we had learned. So now we're past that. Welcome to, I guess you could call this Swing 102, because now we're going to move on to some of the more advanced components. Um, we already covered, you know, basic text input and, you know, buttons and labels, but here are some of the more interesting, you know, components uh, that you can add. And in this episode, I'm going to show you the J combo box, which is like a drop down box where you select one option out of a set of options. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Now, I've taken the Swing 101 class, I copied it, pasted it, and then just deleted all of the component stuff. So I have the frame right there then all the information about the frame. I just took out all of the uh, component examples that we had done before. And now we're going to uh, do another one. And then, of course, once we learn about a bunch of these things, we're going to accumulate it into another um, GUI test. So uh, to define, it's called a combo box, or you might call it a drop-down box. You use the J combo box class. So combo box is equal to new J combo box. So let's go ahead and instantiate it. And you'll notice that oh, it doesn't have a type parameter. Okay, so it does. Um, so here you can actually specify the type parameter for the information that you want to store here. Uh, you'd probably use string or object. Um, in this case, we'll just use string. But you can actually specify if you have a combo box of integers and it has only integers in it. Um, then you could specify um, that you want it to only have integers. I think that it's new that they added the type parameter because I don't remember that being there. Um, now, if you look um, in the constructor, uh, you'll notice that there is also a constructor that will take in an array of items. Now, there is all this stuff about setting models, um, but we're going to do that in a separate episode because it's, um, you know, it's actually an important concept that I want to make sure that I go over because it applies to a lot of these advanced components but for now we can just go ahead and declare a new string array um, and then we can list a couple of options so let's just do red yellow and blue the primary colors so now this combo box contains red yellow and blue let's go ahead and add it to the frame add the combo box and now if we go ahead and run it, you'll see that this will come up. You'll see this combo box with the options red, yellow, and blue. And whichever one you choose, uh, you'll get that. Now, it looks like I'm getting an exception. Oh, if you get something like this, component must be showing on the screen to determine its location. Just ignore that. I don't know why it does that, but it's not important. And you don't have to worry about fixing it. I think it just stopped doing it. So... Yeah, but as you can see, we have our combo box with the three options that we specified, and you can select between them. Uh, now, I'll just go ahead and quickly show you the listener that you would use to associate with this, and then also a couple of important methods. So this does have, you know, the same methods that all the other components have, um, but if you want to get the um, selected component, you can do, um, you could either do get selected index, which returns the index, um, so it would be you know, 0 for red, 1 for yellow, 2 for blue, or you could do um, get selected item for a specific um, item. And then it looks like you can also have it select multiple items, but that might require some other configuration. I'm not quite sure. But you can go ahead and say get um, selected item, which returns an object, and then we can say to string to get the string version of it. So let's say that we want to uh, have it print out the item when it's changed. So if you just want to get it by itself, you do combo box get selected item. Um, but let's say that we want to actually have an event that's called or a listener that's called whenever um, they change their selection. So for this, I might be wrong, but let's try first using an item listener. 
Um, so then this is going to be a new item listener. It has one method called item state changed. This might be the wrong event, but let's see. Okay, so then let's just go, let's just try printing out. It would be e.getItem, so it would print out the item. This might actually be wrong, so we'll see. So if I change it to yellow, okay, so it does work, but the side effect is that it is changed, uh, it's printed out twice. So the way that you want to fix this is you would say e.getStateChanged, which would either be selected or deselected. So you want to say if it's equal to item event dot selected so if an item is selected we want to ignore it when it deselects an item we only want to do it when it selects a new item so now if I go from red to yellow it prints out yellow then blue then yellow then red so that obviously works so that's all for this video this is how to make a combo box or a drop down box uh, it's just a box with a bunch of pre-specified options that the user can choose uh, then there's the item listener that you use for whenever the selection is changed. You want to make sure you have this if statement to make sure that you only care about if it's selected, not deselected. And then you would call e.getItem to get the item that was used. Um, you could also do combo box .get selected item, which I'll just put in a comment. So it would be combo box .get selected item uh, if you want to get the selected item of the combo box. Uh, so as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I'll see you guys soon with some more uh, coding videos. Bye, guys.